Welcome to our review on vaccinations. First thing we need to know then is what a vaccine actually is. Now, when we're developing vaccines, we use a small amount of either a dead pathogen or an attenuated pathogen. And the word attenuated just means it's been weakened, so it's not going to cause the full disease. So what actually happens is when we insert that into the body, usually using an injection, then the lymphocytes present within the body will produce antibodies to that pathogen. You won't get ill though, because it's obviously dead or weakened. Now, as a result of that infection, your body will then produce these memory cells, which will remain circulating through your bloodstream. So that if you were to encounter that same pathogen at a later stage, the memory cells are able to replicate very quickly and produce large quantities of the antibodies in a short space of time to then obviously deal with the pathogen before symptoms show. Hence, you are known as immune to that particular pathogen. What we find is that over the years, then we've developed a whole range of different immunizational vaccination programs that have pretty much eliminated diseases that previously caused death or disability to many, many millions of people. So we've saved millions of lives as the result of developing these vaccinations. Now, some of the common ones that you would have actually had as a child in the UK are listed in the table here. You don't have to memorize them or anything like this with the ages. It's just to give you an idea about some of the diseases to which you are actually vaccinated against. So things like polio, diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, those ones are all very common ones that you have throughout your life, just as boosters, etc. MMR, mumps, measles and rubella, you should have had that as a baby. And then again, you would have had a booster just around sort of primary school starting age. Tuberculosis, now not given commonly, but used to be standard when you're in year nine. Girls will have the HPV vaccination when they're in about year eight. And then you've also got the meningitis vaccines that you have on offer as well. So you can see that you're protected against a whole range of diseases that are either very risky in terms of survival rates or can cause quite debilitating disabilities. One thing you need to be able to do is talk about the success of a vaccination. So just to give you a bit of an idea, if we go back to 1900, then we had a 14% child mortality rate in the UK. In the year 2000, that had dropped to just 0.5%. Obviously, not all of that is down to just vaccinations. We also see improvements in diet, healthcare, etc. But the graph on the right does show us how we can talk about the effectiveness of a vaccination. So we've got two lines on there. The yellow coloured line, which extends right the way from 1940 all the way across, those are the number of cases. And then the green line, which starts around about 1970, that is our vaccination. So if we have a little look, you can see that originally the number of cases reported were somewhere between 50,000 and about 175,000. We have the vaccination program beginning where that red arrow points down, somewhere around about 1955-ish. And what we can see is, as a result of the vaccination program beginning, the number of cases drops right down. So if you then look at the corresponding green line, we've got a high vaccine uptake of about 81%. And then when you look down to the 1970s, the number of cases is incredibly low. However, when we get to roughly the late 1970s, just before 1980 there, you can see there was actually a drop in the vaccine uptake. It dropped down to only 30% of the population having the vaccination. Now, that was as a result of one of these safety scares based on a study being published, which then made people panic about having their children vaccinated. The end result, look at the spikes we then get in the number of cases. So we then see the vaccine uptake increasing again and the number of cases dropping right off. So if they give you a graph to discuss, make sure that you do include things like the years. You use numbers where you can off the graph, so read it carefully. If they give you a more accurate scale than that, make sure that you are using proper comparisons. Where you've got an increase in one and a decrease in the other, make sure that you link that in with years and numbers where possible. 
Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now state what a vaccine is. You can explain how they provide immunity to a disease. And you can also evaluate the data on a vaccination program when you're given information in the form of a graph or a table.